let's just be together here, which is no thing. Together means uh, not as together as one thing and a separate thing, this thing here and that thing there. Let's be together as no thing. Let's find out what that's like, what that would be like. Okay. So just to, for a moment, relax the focus of attention. Allow attention just to be open. When we allow attention to be open, we notice that uh, what, it, what is is aware. Aware is here, you could call. And I don't mean aware of any one thing in particular, I just mean open aware in which everything is included. So just notice, don't notice any of the objects, whether the objects of the visual sense or the sound or the senses of the body or thoughts, don't pay any specific attention to any of those for a moment. Instead, pay attention to the simple fact of knowing that is here. Just knowing which is not an object. Let's just do that for a moment. And uh, obviously, after a few seconds, for almost everyone, attention will go to an object. It's very natural to focus on an object. Usually, the most common object to focus on is some thoughts. It's perfectly fine. So some thoughts come. Attention goes to those thoughts for a moment or an hour or for many people the rest of their life. And as soon as you notice that attention is going to those thoughts, no problem. In that moment, just allow attention to be open and free again and not attending to anything in particular. A couple of words that maybe come to mind, and these are not objects, but a couple of words that come to mind in this recognition would be here. Let's see if you recognize here and now. And so here and now, we can say, I am. Okay, everybody can notice I am here and now, right? 
I am here. No, I'm not, I, not I am a body and a mind and a past and a history. Just I am. Very simple. Let's just be I am for a moment. So when we, when we recognize this, the true I, when we say I, when we say I, we're often referring to this body-mind organism and our whole story of past and future, this I, this character. But the true I, the, actually the only I, just leave all of that behind and just be here now as I, knowing. So what we think we are, who we think we are, who we've been believing we are our whole life, is this story of Salvador, or whatever story that you've been telling yourself. This is who I am, the story of me, the past story of me, and also the future story of me. I'm going to get enlightened in six months, whatever. And we've been telling ourselves, I am th this body. Because there are feelings here, so that proves that I am the body. So we've been telling ourselves these stories our whole life, and we take that for granted. But let's find out who we are a little differently than that. So <clears throat> let's be an open holiday, open knowing, and we know, we just simply know I am here, not as anything in particular, as no thing. Don't be fooled by the feelings here in the body. There, of course there are feelings here, don't be fooled to believe that that's who you are. You are the one knowing those feelings. So for a moment I say, get real and don't be fooled because there are some feelings here. No, I. When we know I, who I am in this way, you can see that you are not trapped in this little body. I engulfs everything, encompasses, permeates everything. The objects in your room are within I. The sound of cat is within I, you see. I is not trapped inside of a body. That's just what we believe. 
but what do we actually see for ourselves to be true? Because the work that I do is only about coming to know what's true for yourself by recognizing. And if you see for yourself what's true, you see that I is in compass, encompasses everything. The moon is within this knowing, isn't it? The galaxy is within this knowing. The body is within this knowing. This knowing doesn't have an inside, outside stop someplace. We've been telling ourselves we're limited, but let's look and see if it's true. Let's have a holiday. Look, knowing is permeated everywhere. And everyone here can say the same thing. I, this I that seems to be here, but the actual I is the same for every appearance on this call. I, every body mind can say I and actually recognize themselves as everything, all, in, all encompassing I. We all can say the same thing. If we disregard the story of self that we believe is I, my past history, my future story, my particular pains and aches, disregard all of that as, and know that that's not who I am. And if I know who I actually am, which is no thing, then aren't we all exactly the same? There's no difference. When they speak of oneness, I don't use that word, but they don't mean this body is going to be one with that body or something like that. They mean the knowing is one. Knowing it's the same for all of us, of course. I am nothing. If one wants freedom, it's not going to happen in the future. No one's going to get free in the future. You don't attain freedom in the future. You recognize freedom now. <laughs> you see? You just know what's true and truth sets you free. The idea that I'm going to get free in the future, it, it's, that's, that idea itself is bondage, obviously. So, but come on, it can't possibly be this simple, can it? How can it be this simple? There's so many books, you know, stacks, I have them all. I don't, but we all have them. Can't be this simple because all those books, billions of pages, I have to read every one of them and then I'll get free maybe. <laughs> so, so how can this, this nothing? Can't be it. No, I have to work more. So then the question is, Am I ready to be free? You see, that's the question. It's not a question of judgment either. It's not a question of judgment. 
It's a question of seeing what's true. If one recognizes this here and now, no thing, this no thing that has no name, has no form, has no history, this freedom has no history, you have no history. Look now, you, truth, you have no history. You have no history and no future. You have nothing. You have nothing. You have no stories. If you want to really get real, you have no traumas. If you really want to get real, you have nothing. So then the question one has to look into is if, if nothing is enough, if is what I want is nothing. If I recognize freedom to be nothing here and now, and oh, happy, nice, peace, then the question is, do I want this? And it's not judgment, but for most people, the answer is no. Because for most of us, until we're ready and it's not a judgment, it, we still want to get in there and fix something. Or we want to correct something or understand something. That's a habit. Or we want to improve something so that we attain something more in the future. So in that, I, in that way, I say we're not ready to be nothing. We still want something. So then each of us has to look and see for ourselves, And it just to be very honest, you know. Don't do anything about it. Don't judge it. Don't get rid of it. Just see, okay, this is what I want. No problem. Okay, now I know freedom. Then this is what I want. Have a holiday and see nothing again. You see, this freedom is the end of your world, actually. The world of you, the myth, the myth of you. This freedom is at the end of the myth of you, you see. It's the end of the spiritual path. You know, my book, Liberation, is the end of the spiritual path. And most people don't want the end of the spiritual path because the spiritual path is very romantic and exciting and hopeful and promising. And it's nice, nice, to find perfectly nice way to live. But freedom is the end of the spiritual path, you see. It's the end of attaining anything in the future. Freedom is recognizing freedom now, right now, right now, right now, you see, now. So as I said last time, and I've said before, this is, this is where we meet in nothing. This is where we really meet because this is where we all are the same. There's no difference here. There can't be difference in something that is nothing. And then they call it satsang. This is what they call satsang. I don't use the word necessarily, but it's truth. This is what they call satsang, meeting in truth, in nothing. <laughs> 